Hey everybody, today out in New York, Hyundai pulled the wraps off of the 2025 Tucson. It's been refreshed for this model year to give us a fresher exterior design and a pretty radically changed dashboard design. Starting with the exterior, you'll notice that we have a grill that looks familiar, but when you actually get in closer, you notice that the design itself has changed and the individual LED elements are a little bit squarer than they were before. Now, it's not the same grill insert that we find in the refreshed Santa Fe, or sorry, Santa Cruz. If you want to know more about the Santa Cruz, of course, watch that video, but the headlights are still down there in that lower portion of the bumper. As before, there's going to be a naturally aspirated engine, a turbocharged hybrid, and a turbocharged plug-in hybrid. So let's start under the hood first. Go ahead and pop that here for you. Now, the big change is with the hybrid system because the base engine, that has not changed for 2025. The hybrid system, however, has. It gets a more powerful electric motor both in the regular hybrid and in the plug-in hybrid model. That should mean smoother transitions between gasoline and electricity in the regular hybrid, and it should be able to stay in electric-only mode maybe a little bit longer than the outgoing version. I'm not talking about electric range because that's probably about the same as the outgoing model, but thanks to the motor having more power, it should be able to stay in electric-only operation at slightly higher speeds and across a slightly broader uh, profile of driving situations. So uh, let's take a look around the side here you notice that we still have the distinctive lines we still have the optional matte paint job available I've always wondered if that was worth getting in something like a Tucson it's a relatively inexpensive option and it looks really really good but the maintenance on matte paint jobs can be just a little bit tricky now moving around to the side again you'll notice the strong lines there the real creases that we find in the sheet metal as before Moving all the way around to the back, the design basically is the same as before with these tail lights that have sort of this toothed design. We get some subtle changes here and there, but nothing major as far as the design goes. This is the hybrid model, so we get twin exhaust tips over there, and then we get what kind of look like skid plates, but this is actually just a plastic bumper right down there on the bottom. Long time, a reason to buy the Tucson is the amount of cargo capacity that we find in the back. That has not changed. We still have one of the more generous cargo areas in this segment plenty of storage space under the load floor so even though we don't have a spare tire you could probably stick one under here if you really wanted to if we lift that up you'll notice that we still have that spare tire well down there there just isn't a spare tire so the hybrid battery pack has been really well packaged in this vehicle uh, to really make the most of the space that we have there and we still have of course the power hatch the big change happens on the inside so let's take a look at that now Hyundai has really borrowed a lot of styling cues from the Ionic 5, including the new four dots here on the steering wheel, very similar to what we find in the Ionic lineup. The four dots represent the letter H in Morse code. We get a tri-spoke steering wheel in every model. And then of course we get the big two screen dashboard setup that we've found in other Hyundai models for a while. The fingerprint sensor over here on the driver's side allows you to pull up driver profiles, enter and exit the valet mode, etc. It's kind of a cool touch there. We we have the driver monitoring system right here on top of the steering wheel because of course this is going to get the latest driver assistance tech from Hyundai. Nice sport grips on this N-line trim and yes you can get an N-line trim with the hybrid. The other thing borrowed from the Ionic lineup is the shifter. It's over here on the steering column and that really frees up a lot of space between the front seats. You can see that we have the dual zone automatic climate control controls here, touch screen right there. This vehicle is not on unfortunately so that display is not illuminated at the moment. But we do have this big touch screen LCD up here which now supports wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. And that's part of why we find the new controls down here. Those are linked with that new system in the Hyundai and Kia lineup. Again, lots of storage right there. You can see we have various buttons here so a lock for the all-wheel drive system the drive mode selector auto brake hold big Qi wireless charging mat here and a really nice touch is that the center section is raised up so that way if you have one of those smartphones with the large camera module it actually sits properly on the charging mat and will charge properly two big cup holders right there lots of storage space going on behind and a new seat design which I think is really attractive the bulk of the seat is actually the same but the seat fabrics have changed you can see that this one has sort of a I guess you'd say cross trainer like fabric going on there really attractive touch moving over to the passenger side we have a storage nook just above the air vents and then the glove compartment below that it appears to be a reasonably sized bin style glove compartment the general dashboard design is certainly a little bit less car looking a little bit more truck like i guess you'd say with this generation not quite as square and boxy as the santa fe but certainly i think a little bit squarer and more uh more i guess modern you'd say versus the outgoing model 
If you want something a bit more rugged looking, there's the Tucson XRT. The front end design is basically the same. We get some subtle tweaks depending on which version of the Tucson you get as to whether the wheel arches are body color painted or whether they're black like this model. We get different tires in this model, of course, but they're not all-terrain tires. They're not the most aggressive tire. And we get what kind of looks like a beadlock-capable wheel. Obviously, it's not really a beadlock wheel. The bigger change happens on the inside. I'll just let Travis kind of poke around in there. You'll notice we get a very different center console design. This is a bit more traditional. It has that center console shifter right there in the middle. And as a result, we get less practical storage, honestly, than we get with that column shifter. So if you like the column shifter design, there's the rest of the lineup. And if you like that console shifter design, there's the XRT trim. Moving around to the back of the XRT, we see some subtle changes again. So down here, instead of that silver panel, we get black down here, the black mat, and then we don't get any visible exhaust tips. Now, interestingly, this is the model that doesn't have the hybrid systems. This is just the regular, naturally aspirated engine, and kind of unusually, the hybrid is the one with the visible exhaust tips. Also available is the Tucson plug-in hybrid over here. That continues for this generation, but it gets a bit more power. Now, the design of the Tucson plug-in hybrid, it's basically the same as the regular hybrid. The only major difference on the outside, again, is the back bumper there where we don't find the visible exhaust tips. Obviously, there's gonna be a plug, though, on the other side. The other major change, of course, happens back here in the cargo area, where we find just a hair less storage space. And that's because the 12 volt battery has been relocated to here. We find the charger and the, uh, the 12 volt lithium battery module right there. Bit of a change versus what we find in the regular hybrid model. I am actually surprised that Hyundai didn't manage to squeeze those somewhere else so we could have had exactly the same storage area as the regular model. But I think, honestly, they did a pretty decent job packaging the hybrid and the plug-in hybrid system. If you're interested in the new Tucson, these should be on sale a little bit later this year, but Hyundai has not given us any pricing information. You can expect that it's gonna be pretty similar to the outgoing model, however. Expect maybe a modest price bump for the 2025 model year. I really appreciate what Hyundai has done with the interior, especially the new shifter design and some of the new driver assistance technologies that are gonna be available in this model. So be sure and let me know what you think about all that down there in the comments section below and stay tuned for the Santa Cruz video because this very orange Santa Cruz right over here has received many of the same refreshes that we find in the Tucson lineup.